Hello everyone and welcome to another one of my rambling videos. As promised in my first one, this is going to be talking about another webtoon, but this one is going to be on the opposite end of the spectrum from God of High School, which is a very popular webtoon in the West. This one is much more obscure in the West, but is very popular in Korea, and that would be Helper. So. I'm sure, like a lot of people recently, I was introduced to this webtoon through Scamboli Reviews. You should go check out his video, I'll probably link it somewhere. Um, but his video did a very good job introducing me to the premise of Helper and getting me interested in it. So, since I am going to be talking about spoilers in this video, not super in-depth, but I'm going to be talking about some spoilery stuff. Um, I'm going to pitch Helper to you now and suggest you go read it and then come back and watch this. Or if you don't care, just like watch the whole thing and then go read Helper. Um, so the premise of Helper is that this guy dies and he goes to hell. And when he goes to hell, he gets a black ticket. And anyone who gets a black ticket goes to hell. Now, if you're able to collect 100 black tickets, you can trade it in for a white ticket, which you can use to either go to heaven or be reincarnated. So naturally, our main character is going to go around fighting people, trying to collect 100 tickets so that he can be reincarnated. There's your premise. Um, very basic stuff. Um, if I have to give a little more details on it, the art is extremely stylized and it makes excellent use of the medium it's in. The story is very interesting and it's very easy to care about the characters. They're all very well designed and all very compelling and you'll have a very easy time becoming attached to them and wanting to see their motivations work out. So with that, go read Helper. And now I'm going to start talking about this webtoon much more in depth. So, as I already mentioned, the main character of Helper, it's a dead guy, his name is Jang Guangnam. He's the leader of a biker gang, and he dies in a motorcycle crash. He wakes up in the afterlife with a black bracelet, which means he's going to hell. Uh, he finds out after various events happening in the very early story, uh, the whole deal about if you collect a hundred, you can be reincarnated or go to heaven. And he chooses reincarnation for reasons. Um, and the story just kind of goes from there. Now, the very interesting thing about Helper's story is it's kind of split into two parts, happening simultaneously. So you have the stuff going on in the afterlife with Jang trying to get enough tickets to reincarnate. And then you also have the stuff happening in the real world with his biker gang and how all of the people that he knew and whose lives he affected, how they are being impacted by his death, and how his death is affecting the gang that he created. Um, and I just have to say, the story handles sort of the way the people cope with loss and the way that people's deaths affect everything that they leave behind. It handles it really well, um, and that you have various characters that respond to his death in very different ways depending on how close they were to him, what sort of effect he specifically had on them, what their position or relationship to the rest of the gang was. They all handle it really well, and the characters all sort of feel like real people uh, to some extent. Maybe not as much as something like Chainsaw Man, where the way everyone talks and stuff and the way they go about things, it feels like actual human beings. Um, but I feel like the emotions and actions of a lot of these people do feel like like real people. They don't just feel like characters in a story. Um, on the other side of the story happening in the afterlife, I think the story progresses really well. It starts off with a very simple concept and starts to get progressively more complicated as it gets more and more connected to the world. I guess complicated wouldn't be the right word. It gets bigger. The, the scope of the plot expands as the plot progresses, and it does it at a pretty good pace. I'd say you don't have, like, a big reveal until, like, every 20 chapters or so, maybe more. Um, like, the, the story itself is paced really well, and the way that they connect 
Jang to the events going on in the rest of the afterlife is it's done fairly well in my opinion um and i'm not going to spoil any big details but like some really shocking stuff happens it has some genuinely really good plot twists um so once again if you haven't read helper please go read it so that you can get to those plot twists yourself they're very fascinating um and i would say they're probably up there with some of my favorite plot twists in any media um so yeah it's it's all very well done i don't think i don't think there were any plot twists that i had expected because you know sometimes the the hinting is a little too not subtle and it becomes very easy to predict what's going on i don't think that really happened with any of the plot twists in this now, the story of Helper does not just take place in, like, this blank, barren wasteland. It takes place in a world that I quite like, and I think is sort of built up in some very good ways. Because there's, I don't think there's ever, like, a big exposition moment explaining how everything works. And if there is one, it's not, like, super in-depth, several paragraphs long. You get, like, a creation myth thing, but that's a creation myth. That's different. Um... It's it sort of develops through interactions with characters as Jang goes to new locations and meets new people and sort of learns about how everything works. Um, so as he goes along, he learns about the Reapers and the Dead and Middletown and how the different colors affect sort of what people's ranks are in the Netherworld. It's all very cool. I like it a lot. Um, if I have another series I could compare this to, it would be Bleach. In my Bleach reviews, I talked about how the world building in Bleach is kind of lacking. Like, you have Soul Society and the Seirete, and you have the Gote 13, but you don't really go very in-depth and do a lot of stuff, you know, about, like, the, um, the Assassination Unit and Central 46, but we never really learn a lot about them. They're just kind of something that we know is there. Um... And with Helper, everything is just sort of brought up, and eventually you get, like, some sort of introduction to it. You learn about the, the eastern and western branches of the Reapers. You sort of find out about how Middletown works and how it came to be, the people that live there, um, and various other things, like the, um, the special missions for the Reapers, where they go have to kill someone by four in the morning. I think it's all very well done, and when I heard that this story takes place in hell, I didn't really have, like, a, a lot of expectations for it. I guess this part isn't really hell, but, like, it's about a guy who's dead and goes to the afterlife, so I'm thinking, like, basic Dante's Inferno type shit. No. The Netherworld and Helper is weird in a good way. It's sort of like a mix between various different things. The The... The Netherworld itself is just, like, a weird abstract dimension, so, like, there's a bunch of stuff there that doesn't really make sense, and I like it. Um, the dead are, like, these weird, almost eldritch creatures where when someone dies, their soul, or, well, they don't die. When they lose their ticket, they are, their soul is sucked out of their body by the power of hell, and they turn into, like, these monsters created from dark energy, um... And they become, like, this big, monstrous, dark reflection of whoever they were. A lot of the time it has something to do with how they died, which is another cool thing. The dead, not the dead, but, like, the souls of the departed, their appearances are all based on how they died. So Jang is dressed up as, like, a biker, or he has, like, these motorcycle motifs because he died in a motorcycle crash. And you get that with pretty much all of the other characters, um, and it's, it's really unique. I don't know if there's very much else like this, um, and what I, what I like a lot, another thing that I really like is the way that it incorporates various different mythologies, so God of High School was the last webtoon I talked about in these rambling videos, and in God of High School, it's just kind of like all of the mythologies exist, but like the big one is Journey to the West. And Journey to the West is important in this, but it's not central to the plot 
in the way that it is for God of High School. And it was just like, oh yeah, like they're characters from Journey to the West, or related to characters from Journey to the West. And they're mostly like side characters, they're not super important. But they also incorporate other things. You have references to uh, Greek mythology with Medusa, and uh, Egyptian mythology with the Anubis mask. Um, you have references to Christianity, like, just beyond it being hell with the creation myth. Well, in this case, it wouldn't be a myth. It would be the creation story. Um, hell and heaven existing. They have, like, really, really creative references to events from the Bible. So one of the brutal dead, the big of the dead, uh, the big of the dead, the, the, the top three biggest, most important of the dead, Kiss 12 is a reference to Judas Iscariot um, because he was the 12th apostle of Christ and it was relating to how he revealed who Jesus was to the Romans. Like, that's a really creative shit. I would have never been able to thought, uh, think of something as creative as that to do, like, a mythological reference. So all of these things are incorporated really well in a way that's not overbearing. The world is not composed of all of these different mythologies. The mythologies are just sort of sprinkled in to an already existing unique world. If there's any really small complaint, like a nitpick I have about Helper, is that there are a lot of characters. More so on like the, the world of the living side who are introduced. So it's kind of hard to keep track of what the names of a lot of the characters are. Fortunately, a lot of them have nicknames, like the Peddler and Dog Seller. I don't remember what their real names are, but I remember their nicknames. And they're also some of the more important ones. Um, but, man, are the characters in this series good. And there are multiple levels to that. I guess it would be the character designs and then the actual characterization. So, in a lot of webtoons you pretty much distinguish the different characters by either what sort of eyes they have or what hair color or hairstyle they have. A lot of the characters look very samey. It's a big problem in uh, God of High School. A lot of the characters look very similar. Um, but that is not the case in Helper, which is mostly due to the art style, which I'll talk about right after this. Um, pretty much all of the characters have very distinct, unique designs. Um, a lot of them have sort of different body shapes or very distinguishing physical features that set them apart from everyone else. Um, and that's sort of helped by a number of factors for the human characters who are dead. You have how their appearance is based on whatever the cause of their death was. Um, so with Jang, of course, he has a very distinct look. But that's also just because the guy has a distinct look about all of the other characters. He's got, like, that biker... He's got, like, the Kiss look. Like, the band Kiss. Um, that fucking look that that terrible game Hatred ruined for several years. Yeah, Jang saves that look. Um, Sese is very unique with, like, her Beast of Darkness hood. Um, oh, man. I would say probably... Two of the big standout designs for me would probably be the Lone Shark and Bake Sio. Those, oh my god, I fucking love those guys. They're so cool. They're probably two of my favorites. So for the Lone Shark, first of all, I would have never thought of like a Lone Shark character. I'm, I've taken a, I'm getting a lot of inspiration from this for my own little mini side art and storytelling projects. I don't do, like, I don't share them with people because I'm not that confident in them yet. But um, this has given a lot of, like, very interesting ideas for characters and for stories. Um, the Lone Shark guy is awesome. He's got, like, an arm sword that he pulls out, and the type of sword that he uses depends on how many fingers he's holding up on the sword or Oh, fuck. Uh, how many fingers he's holding up on the sword hand arm thing. Um, but he's just cool. And Bakesio, oh, we're going to be talking about Bakesio. Um, but he is a member of, like, these, the four big guys for the Eastern Branch who are such huge badasses that when 
people are reincarnated. They have this subconscious memory of them, um, and they say that they'll ruin your life. Now, these four guys are representative of booze, smoking, um, gambling, and women. <laughs> not not literally women. It's a translation thing. That's another thing. Webtoon seems to have like some translation issues, like how Blackbird's name is actually supposed to be Black King or something. Um, but women, they're supposed to mean like adultery or womanizing. And Bexio represents smoking. So... As we already know, anime characters who smoke are already pretty awesome, but Bexio's whole powers are based around smoking cigarettes, um, which I'll talk about later. But, like, the guy is just so awesome, and I guess this is probably where I should get into the characterization stuff. Um, every character, for the most part, most characters, have some kind of gimmick to their character, and for Bexio, Bexio is the strongest in the netherworld. He's the best around. So whenever he meets some other guy who's thinking they're the best, so when he meets the loan shark, the loan shark says, out of one, one out of 1.3 billion, I'm the best in China. I'm the best assassin, the most dangerous person in all of China. And I'm like, oh shit. I like when characters say shit like this. I don't know what it is. But when people put how badass they are into, like, quantifiable numbers, without it being, like, a power level thing, um, I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, please give me more of that. And Bixio goes, yeah, that's great. Well, I'm the best in the netherworld. I'm like, mmm, yeah. Oh, oh, I fucking bet you are. And he is. Um, and beyond the, like, little character quirks that they all have, the author does a really good job at making you sympathize with characters even if they're just around for like a little bit or they're really despicable you still find a way to feel bad for them or the author makes you feel bad for them in ways that don't feel cheap so with the loan shark guy on his sword arm he has a bunch of black eyes so with the souls of the dead they have however many red eyes on them depending on how many people wept when they passed away, how many people mourned for them. And we find out from the loan shark that the souls who have black eyes, no one wept for them, no one mourned their death. And you're just kind of like, oh, that's like, that's genuinely like kind of heartbreaking that that, that that happened to you, even though you're like a murderous assassin who kills everyone that you work with. Like, I still kind of feel bad for you like no one cared when you died that's terrible um which once again goes back to the themes of like loss and death that the series does really well um another one of my favorite examples was when um jang is fighting the special team from the western branch i think and the copy race Sam? I think his name is Sam. So Sam, I don't speak Korean, so I don't know what the double S is, how you're supposed to pronounce that. But he, he eats this thing that gives him a big power buff, and he fights Jang. And he has a flashback to when he's being created by the scientist that leads the special team. And he says, hey, I'm a copy race. Why do you care so much about making me like a carrier unit? Why won't you let me fight? And he says, oh, like, I just don't want you to get hurt. And this is immediately after, spoilers, the scientist guy gets his head blown off and Sam is about to be killed. And I'm just kind of like, oh my god, this is, this is like genuinely heartbreaking. Like, I just don't want you to get hurt. That's something so simple, um, yet touching. I'm generally not easily emotionally moved by things. But for some reason, it's just the very simple, genuine things that really manage to move me. And that line in particular, I was just kind of like, oh my god, it's like a gut punch. Um, that stuff is all done really, really well. Um, another thing, ugh, I should have talked about this earlier. I really like the Reaper's line, I will remember you. So that gets introduced, I think, when Jusa is fighting Jang very early in the story. That's like a quote. And... Every time a Reaper is about to kill someone, 
they say, I will remember you. And they never, I don't think they ever explain the origin of that or if it's like some part of the Reaper culture, creed, whatever. It's just a thing that they all say. So you know it's like just a thing that they do. And I really like it. It's just like a neat little quirk that all of the Reapers have that sort of distinguishes them from everyone else beyond just like their color of blue and black, which is awesome, by the way. Oh my god, I love the blue, black, and white um, character designs. I'll talk about that when I get into the art, um, which makes it really good. Oh, the I will remember you thing for like the previous 140 something chapters, maybe more, was such good buildup for when the Watonker fight ends and the Windcutter guy. Whatever, one of the captains of the Eastern Branch is going to kill Watonker, and he says, Not me, not anyone ever. No one will ever remember you. Oh my god, that shit is so fucking good. Um, in case you couldn't tell, I really like that fight. There's gonna be a section talking about it. You can probably see it if you've checked the description already. Um, yeah, that shit is really good, and I really, really love when series and stories do stuff like that. Now, I think I can safely say that the art is probably the most unique distinguishing thing about Helper. If you've read a lot of webtoons, you've probably noticed that a lot of them have very samey styles. They all kind of look like this off-brand anime art style. I could flip through like a hundred different webtoons and a lot of them would look very similar. It's probably why things like Lore Olympus and stuff like that is so popular, because it looks different, um, you know, other than the, whatever the actual story contents are. But like upon first glance, the thing that draws you into it is the appearance is very different from everything else. And Helper does a really good job at that. The first part of this is the overall art style itself. Helper does not look like any anime I've ever seen before. If anything, the general use of shapes and stuff reminds me a lot of, like, a Gendy Terakotsky cartoon. Like, Samurai Jack, the stuff that he makes, and the stuff from Samurai Jack, just the way everything is drawn, the shapes of everything, it reminds me of something like that. It doesn't look like any kind of anime I've seen before, which is why it probably wouldn't work as an actual anime. You know, there are always people in the webtoon comments saying, oh yeah, this needs an anime. No, I don't think Helper would really work as an anime, uh, for various reasons. Probably the biggest one being the art style and the way that it makes use of the webtoon medium. Um, it makes a lot of use of the fact that you are scrolling down to read it, so there are parts where it tells you to scroll really fast or to hold your breath and stop for a second, things like that. Um, that's another thing I really like is... A lot of webtoons are just, like, very basic comic stuff. They don't do anything super creative with the way that webtoons are read. And Helper does do that. And I really like when webtoons take advantage of the format of what their story is being told in. Um, so, another thing is the use of color. Um, for the most part. Helper is in black and white. It's like a manga. Um, so for all of you manga fans, this is probably going to be fairly easy to like get used to reading. I know going from colored webtoons to black and white mangas is kind of weird. Uh, I don't know if it's like a, a thing for you guys, but for me, it's always kind of weird going in between something that has no color and a lot of detail and something that has a lot of color and not as much detail. Helper sort of bridges the gap between that and that most of it is black and white, at least in the netherworld, and makes very sparing, specific uses of color. So I mentioned a little while ago that there is like a color hierarchy. It's like the colors of the rainbow. And red is the lowest color. You go up to get to higher colors. Um, goblins have yellow. Taoist magic monkey things have green. Reapers have blue, some 
divine things. I don't remember what dark blue, what navy is for. I know Jusa and Wukong have it. I don't remember what what the um, class or whatever to have dark blue is. And then you have purple for the members of the dark party. And I guess also the archangels. Um, so whenever color is used in netherworld it's always a big deal the actual color that characters have on them is very important um i'll discuss that in the segment about one of the specific fights um it, it has like an actual impact on how characters are able to attack each other or whether or not certain items are usable by various characters it's all very creative now, in the living world, by contrast, there's color pretty much everywhere. Like, almost everything has color in it. And that makes it seem much more lively than the netherworld, which is, of course, the land of the dead. So a lot of it's very soulless and lifeless. And so that use of color is very creative, and it manages to draw attention to things that are of importance. And I, I just think, like, the, the use of color in this is very creative, and I applaud the author for such creative and adept use of color. Now, all of the things that I've talked about for the last 25 minutes or so are culminated and put together in the fights. Now, Helper has a lot of fights, and I'd say they're all pretty good. I'd say even the least good fights in Helper are pretty good, so, you've already got the plot driving them. Pretty much every fight that happens has some sort of significance to the plot, or the character's own motivations, or it's just to show off how fucking cool the characters are. Um, you get to see a lot of the creative uses of the various transformations that the Souls of the Dead are able to use, the powers that the Reapers have, things like that. It's all very awesome. And once again, this is where the author makes very creative use of the format of a webtoon. You'll have sections where a character gets like kicked or something, or they shoot like this big attack, and you've just got this line or whatever going down super fast, going down like, I don't know how big pages in webtoon are, but it goes down for a while. You've got to scroll for like a couple seconds to get all the way through it. They make use of pretty much all of the various components of the comic, and they do a really good job at it. Another detail I should probably add is that the choreography for the fights in general are just really good. Even when they're not using, like, super crazy powers, the actual, like, hand-to-hand -hand choreography is pretty well done. Um, one, actually... What are my favorite fights? I would say probably my two. Both involve Bexio. <laughs> How convenient. Um, Bexio versus the Lone Shark. And Bexio versus Watonker. Or I guess that wasn't just Bexio. But the showing off of powers. Showing off Bexio's smoking abilities and the Lone Shark's sword arm powers. It's just so fucking cool. I, I really love that fight a lot. If you were like, oh yeah, this dude that has a, a sword arm and this guy with cigarette powers are going to fight each other and it's going to be super awesome, I'd tell you you were crazy. But fortunately, that's not the craziest fight in the series, which I'm going to talk about right now. So if you don't want like any super in-depth spoilers about any of the fights... Um, you should probably skip this section to the section that I'm going to have after this in the timestamps. Alright, so the Eastern Branch versus Jonana Watanker. Oh my god. So, you know how I just talked about how the fights in Helper make great use of the medium and really just all the other aspects of the comic really well? Yeah, this fight takes that and they just fucking turn it up to 11. So... Watonker is a guy whose power is his tongue. He's got like a big yucky tongue that he can use to just kill everyone um, because he's a member of the Dark Party and he's probably like the top, one of, the, one of the top five strongest characters. 
So you've got Bexio, a guy who says he is the best in the netherworld, and then the entirety of the Eastern Reaper branch. Um, yeah, it's not so... Blackbird, the head of the Eastern branch, uses his power to take control of all the other Reapers in the branch. It's sort of like his power is like a chessboard at first, I think, and then it turns into like... Um, why am I forgetting the word? Um, it turns into like a video game. I don't know why I'm forgetting. This is the problem with doing videos the way I do is sometimes word. Arcade! It's like an arcade game. Um, where he's like fucking spamming buttons and jerking around the joystick like a madman. It's like a dude that's been playing this game for the last 20 years. He comes in every Saturday. And the man just, he just fucking goes at it. It's like a second instinct to him. Um, this fight is so fucking insane. You have Bexio using his cigarette powers to turn himself into a human cigarette. Basically, chain smoking is such a cool name for his ability. Um, he looks like Black Flame from BPRD. Read BPRD, it's really good. Um, or I guess this would be the middle design. Black Flame has, like, four designs. The one before he gets turned into, like, a weird monster guy. Um, I fucking love that design so much for some reason. When he punches Wattalker's jaw off, I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, it was nuts. Um, the way that Blackbird has... All of the other Reapers... Or no, they, that's the, that's even better. So, the Reapers are all being commanded by Blackbird to attack him. You're all at 50% power. Your requirement is to get at least one hit on him. That's how strong Watonker is. If you can get at least one hit on him, your mission is accomplished. It's fine if you get killed. Um, so, you've got hundreds of these guys throwing themselves at Watonker. He's killing almost all of them. They're all basically doing nothing to him. Then you have everyone piling onto him by their own volition. Um, so, to use themselves as, like, tinder. To turn themselves into, like, a giant fire pit, a bonfire. So that they can be fuel for Bexio. And he does his big flame attack. Blackbird hits, like, the end button to complete the combo. There's this giant nuclear explosion. It's insane. The, the end to that fight is so satisfying. It's so fucking good. Someone did a little animation featuring three of the characters from this fight. Blackbird, Bexio, and Watonker. I'll link that here. Hopefully if I can figure out how this feature works. If not, it's in the description. Um, and then that thing I mentioned earlier where it seems like he's dead. Like he's on his knees. He's been burnt down to the bone. And I think he's the ninth squad division captain he's got the the seven pronged sword from korean mythology that i don't remember the deal with but i know how it works and he says no one ever no one will ever remember you oh, i got so fucking pissed when he cut that dude's head off you know those moments webtoons do this all the time i've noticed it's a fucking webtoon thing where you think the villain's about to be killed but no they're not actually dead um, and then they get away for, like, another hundred chapters. Damn, I hate that shit. But, yeah, the Eastern Branch versus Watonker fight is easily, without question, probably the best fight in the entirety of Helper. I'm going to reread it again just so I can re-experience how fucking amazing that fight is. God, when Watonker's like, oh, yeah, I can see why you think you're the best of the Reapers, and he's like, no, bitch. I told you, I'm the best in the netherworld. Not the best in the Reapers. I'm the fucking best in this whole neighborhood, bitch. God, that shit is so good. So, yesterday I finished Helper. I've read all, I think, 188 chapters of it that are on Webtoon. And I find out that this is because Helper on Webtoon is just part one of what's going to be a three-part series. And part two is already in production. It's been in production for like three years with chapters coming out. Unfortunately, those chapters are not 
on Webtoon, and they're not translated. However, I don't give a shit. I want to read through it. I need to at least look over what happens in the rest of the story. So, if any of you know where I can read it for free, preferably, um, and without getting a bunch of viruses on my computer, please let me know where, link it or something. I've seen there are some controversies with Season 2. It's not as bad as I had thought, or as someone had originally sort of said to me before, but there's like some weird shit with them using the exact likenesses of idols or K-pop stars and doing a bunch of weird shit with them and showing sexual abuse of minors. Listen, I'll defend shocking edgy stuff as long as it's done tastefully but if like you're just showing like a 14 year old getting sexually assaulted that's a little yikes but you know i do want to read the rest of the story that's out so far i don't want to have to wait like another year or more until it starts getting translated on webtoon so once again if you do have some place that you know of where i can start reading part two i think it's called kilbaros Please let me know. I, I really, I need more of this shit. I'm, I'm addicted now. I'm hooked. I need more of it directly into my bloodstream, please. Um, so, with that, that's really all I have to say. Once again, read Helper. It's amazing. It's definitely the best webtoon I've read. It's way better than solo leveling. It's way better than God of High School. It's better than some other mangas that I've read. It's really... It shows how good webtoons can be taking advantage of the medium and also just being an amazing story that just is a fantastic example of visual medium at its finest so with that that's all i have to say for this video if you enjoyed please be sure to like comment subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads these rambling things are sort of like a once in a while thing it's when i don't want to do a long-running consistent review series or it's on a already completed piece of medium so doing one kind of long rambling video is just like a preferred way of doing it for me now my subscriber milestone goal is to hit 1,000 by the end of the year. Our sub gain over the last month has been absolutely ridiculous. The channel has more than doubled in size over the last 28 days. So reaching 1,000 is actually maybe kind of doable, actually. So I'd like to see if we can do it. So subscribe so that we can get a little closer to that goal. I'm sure you won't regret it. If you enjoy other series such as Record of Ragnarok, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Chainsaw Man, and Kangen Omega, actually... I do videos on those series as well, so if you're interested in those, you should definitely check out my channel. If you enjoy discussing Helper, if you want to talk about it with me, or you enjoy discussing any of those other series, you should check out my Discord server. I have a link to it on my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.